Hello and thank you for coming to check this out. So we're going to look at how to reverse the overshoot behavior for a titles template or an effects template. So when it comes to reversing things in motion, uh, there's various options, but in a motion project, the easiest thing to do is clone a group, clone a layer, and reverse the clone. And the problem is that if you're making titles templates, you cannot reverse a clone. Uh, so if you are familiar with motion, um, very shortly we'll look at the alternative. But first of all, if you're just getting to no motion, if you're just starting out and you're not sure what I mean by the clone method, we'll do that first and then I'll show you why it doesn't work in a titles template. So I have a shape here set up with a basic overshoot. There it is. And the shape is in a group. What I'm going to do is grab the group and I'm going to come to halfway in my project. Project is 5 seconds, so I'll come to 2 seconds and 15 frames. I'm going to trim that group to that halfway point. Then I'm going to clone it, grab the clone group and shift that to start at the halfway mark. Then I'll grab the clone layer come to timing in the inspector and properties if you don't see the timing option just click show and you see here this reverse option I'm going to click that and this is the result and this is great uh, for motion projects to reverse pretty much any composition out if you can clone it set it half and half this is a great thing to do really quick and easy but as I mentioned in a titles template or an effects template, it doesn't work. And we'll jump over to a titles template now to show you what I mean. Okay, so this is the same project. Now it's been converted to a titles template. And we'll see what happens. Okay, so clearly that reversing function is not working now. And if you come over here to the timing section in the clone layers uh, properties in the inspector you'll see that that reverse option is gone so this is why we need another option to reverse overshoot in a titles template um, generally in titles templates reversing is a matter of grabbing keyframes and reversing them manually and that works really really well but for behaviors we got to look at things differently. Lots of behaviors, especially sequence behaviors or sequence text, they have a backwards and forwards function, which is great. So you can build in and out with those. Other behaviors have a directional function, but the overshoot behavior doesn't. So to reverse it in a titles template, uh, it's kind of messy to do. So we're going to look at a really good option for it now. But first of all, let's have a look at other ways that you could do it to highlight the need for something better. Right, so what I'm going to do is just get rid of this clone layer group. And we'll do something similar uh, half and half in the timeline. Uh, I'm going to grab this shape with the overshoot on it. And I'm going to duplicate it. And what I'm going to do is use Command K on my keyboard to convert the behavior on this shape to keyframes. So we'll go ahead and convert. So now you can see I've got keyframes. And I can grab them and reverse. And now I can place, let's trim it out to Actually, we're not going to do that. Uh, well, I'm just going to place this shape at the other end of the timeline. I'm not going to bother grabbing all the keyframes and moving them up. This is good enough. So we've got overshoot in, and now we've got overshoot out. So it can be done without a clone. But this is a titles template, and publishing is really important. And this is just a simple shape, but it demonstrates the need to have something better. So first of all, with this method, you'll see that the keyframes are now baked in. So in the first instance, you're working with your project, trying out different things, how different things look. 
every time you want to change the overshoot, uh, you're going to have to redo those steps, convert, revert, uh, reverse, convert, reverse, and then set it up again, uh, which can become really annoying really quickly. Uh, the other thing is with publishing. Okay, so if we want to publish any of these values here for the user of the template, they are only going to have an effect on the animation in, and they will not have any effect on the animation out. So it's like you can publish controls for only one direction. Okay, uh, the other thing is, well, if you if this one group here was to represent one element visually, then if I'm also going to publish controls for the shape, size, color, uh, width and height, scale, rotation, any of those things, then they all have to be linked to this shape as well. And so it becomes a big uh, link, link party in the layers panel here. And that's a lot of link wrangling, a lot of link maintenance as well. Right, uh, so let's now have a look at the better option. Okay, I've started here in a new titles template. Uh, it's 30 frames a second and the duration is 5 seconds, so it's 150 frames in duration. I have the shape, I'm going to come to properties and come to scale, and we will add overshoot and I'm not going to trim it to set the duration instead I'm going to use the end offset so it's 150 frames in duration I want it 30 frames long so 150 minus 120 gives me 30 frames and then this overshoot will run for one second I'm going to grab start value enter minus 100 so now we have our overshoot Okay, so the next thing I want to do is grab this, duplicate it, and I'm going to come to scale again, and this time I will add also the parameter behavior reverse. So I'll just turn off the one that comes in, so you can see now we have that layer but everything is reversed. Okay, so next step, let's rename these. I'm going to call this one in and call this one out. Then uh, with the playhead at halfway, I want to grab out and trim it to start there, but I want these uh, behaviors to run the full duration. And then I'll grab in, and I want that to end at the halfway point, but I want this overshoot behavior to run the full duration. Okay, so now we have animation in and animation out. And so now visually, we have got one composition here, which is one shape. Animating in on the overshoot and reversing that overshoot on the way out. All right, so let's stop. We're going to go a little bit further, but let's stop and look at the benefits here. So. Number one, we actually have the behavior for the build-in and the build-out intact. So these values now, uh, we wouldn't publish each of them directly. What we're going to do, well, you could publish values for build-in, build-out, but we want them linked, and you can't link directly uh, with the link behavior. So what we would do, for example, is we would grab well, we want to do cycles. Let's add that to, uh, we could do it to slider or pop-up. Let's do it to just a slider.
and let's grab say ramp duration and I'll just drag that up there now okay so I'll grab the out overshoot and add cycles to cycles actually I want to grab uh, ramp duration and remove that I'm going to grab ramp duration and add that to a new slider I don't want it on a new rig sorry okay we're just gonna grab the rig there and we'll add a new slider and call this one um, ramp okay so now I'll grab ramp duration for in add that to ramp and ramp duration for out and add that to ramp so we got cycles in and out and we've got ramp in and out okay so you could do this for any of the parameters you want and that includes duration as well so if you wanted to make the overshoot longer or slower then you'd be doing that with this end offset value here okay so cycles in and out let's set the minimum range to 0.5 and the maximum to let's just make it three so then at 0.5 we want to set 0 0.5 0 0.5 and at the maximum it's at three okay so that slider is running properly there and let's come to ramp and we can set this minimum value at one so at one We'll drop ramp down to one, which will just be really crazy. But then we can set it all the way up to 100 for no overshoot at all. This is just all for example. Okay, cool. So now we can publish and publish ramp as well. Okay, so just for example. Right, let's change that to 0.5 and change set that ramp down to 15. Okay, so we can publish controls that will act on the build in and the build out. So it's a huge advantage over just converting to keyframes and setting it up that way. So from here, we want to go a step further as well. Uh, so I mentioned we well we've got this one composition that represents one layer visually and it's doing its job well it's, okay it's just a basic example with a square but it can become uh, much more involved than this uh, but from this demonstration uh, you'll see that we've got these two layers here and if then I want to make color roundness uh, height width other things available they have to be linked between them but I don't want to have uh, a link festival going on in my layers so I want just one item to publish from so what we're going to do is grab well I'm going to rename this group to null and then I'll just add another group And I'm going to turn this group off. Let's add uh, a circle this time. Just center it. Okay, so I want this to take on the properties of this in and out. So I'm going to grab scale, add a link. I'll call this one. In and then drag an in as the source and then I'll duplicate that call this one out and drag an out as the source then I'm going to come to 
halfway in the timeline, trim out to start here and trim in to finish here. So now you can see in the editor we've got one continuous curve for the scale. Let's just come to, well just to show you, Okay, that's all good. Let's just come and drop everything back to default. And there we go. So that is a better method for reversing overshoot in a titles and effects template when reversing clone isn't available and you want to be able to publish um, overshoot parameters as well. All right, that's all for this guide. Um, what I'm going to do is publish, take this a bit further, and add this method to overshoot with sequence text, and I'll do that in another guide um, very soon. But I hope this was useful for you. Thanks for checking it out. Thanks for watching.